Welcome to Step by Step Making a Baby Journal Part 6 where we'll make the apron. I'm laying the skirt pattern right on top of the apron fabric and I'm going to cut one piece which would be half of the entire skirt because I'll disregard the instructions to place the pattern on the fold like I did for the skirt. I took the edge of the apron and ironed down one quarter inch on the right side, one quarter inch on the left side. I turned each of the side seams in a second time, one more quarter inch, ironed that down. When I had both of those done, I went to my sewing machine and simply stitched each of those edges of the apron panel down with just a simple stitch. Both of the side edges of the apron panel are now finished. To gather the top of the apron panel, I'll base one line 3 8 inches from the raw edge along the whole width of the apron. Then I'll come back and baste another line 1 half inch from the raw edge. Just like when we I'm doing the second row of stitching now which will be at about the half inch mark. Just so straight so don't let your stitching zigzag across each other. They need to be perfectly parallel. This takes care of the top of the apron panel. I'm going to prepare the waistband for the ties of the apron. The apron tie and waistband is a piece of fabric that's cut that's 24 inches long by two and a half inches wide and my intention is that the finished product will be about three quarter inch wide and 23 inches long because a little bit of the seam allowance disappears right here. The apron panel after you gather it will be sewn right into between these two dots here and then the rest of that will go around to the back which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. I marked the apron band in three spots. One here where the edge of the apron panel will go, one in the center and one on the other edge. Now I'm going to take that, move that out of the way. I sewed two rows of stitching on the apron panel. I'm going to take this apron panel and flip it upside down like this and I'm going to pin this edge of the apron panel right where this pin is and I'm going to be careful to put the pin so that it goes above and below the double stitching that I did and then I'll take the other end of it and pin it right here. Okay, so I put those two pins there and now I'll find the center of the apron panel and put it right in the middle where the middle pin is. Now as I gather these threads and I pull it, it'll gather it all nice and flat. I need to find the two threads that come off the back side where the double stitching is and I have those two threads right here now with my left hand I'm just going to kind of hold on to those to the fabric and I'm going to pull with my right hand as I do that little gathers cr are created and then with my other hand I'll just kind of spread those gathers out towards the center of the apron panel continue gathering until the entire apron is laying flat on top of the apron band the same step on the other side. Find the two threads that lay on the top and with your other hand, your right hand, pull the gathers. With your left hand, pull the threads. And you just keep pulling it tighter and tighter until it's gathered as, as necessary to fill in this whole area between the two pins. After I get one side kind of tightened up as best I can, I take the two threads and loop them around the pin that's holding the end, loop it around several times and it, you, you kind of use it like a cleat or a tie down that you would use to tie down a rope or a cord on a blind and then you have something to pull against and, and it'll help you to to move on to tightening the whole thing up and making it all nice and flat. I totally realized as I was doing this that I was gathering 21 inches of skirt panel into an area about 9 inches wide, which is a bit overkill. So it might have been better to just start with maybe 15 to 18 inches of fabric and it wouldn't be quite so hard to gather it because it was a chore gathering all this up. When I get to the end, I'm going to take the pin out and release those threads that have been wound around them. When I get to the end, I'm going to stop at the edge of the stitching, go backwards. What we just did was simply sold the apron front panel onto the waistband and you can see exactly where the end of it is. Because I have checkers, you can kind of follow with your eyes straight up. I'm going to mark with a pen right straight up where the apron panel is. You could also just draw a line in with a pencil. 
I'm going to fold the apron panel up out of the way and then fold the apron waistband up so that that pin lines up directly with the very, very edge of the apron panel. And then I will pin it very carefully. As I turn it over, I can see where my stitching ended from when I sewed the apron panel onto the waistband. I'm going to fold the apron tie from the stitching all the way to the end, matching up the print right sides together, and pin it every couple inches all the way to the end. I'm going to put my needle in exactly where the stitching ended and go down, sew down to the end of the tie, stop, leave my needle in, and then sew back and forth across the end of the tie. I have my needle in the exact spot, and because of my gingham check, I can see clearly exactly where I need to sew. Stop right there, turn, and go straight down the zig, go backwards. Before I start to turn the apron ties right side out, it's important to trim off the excess seam allowance. I'm trimming off each of the corners, being careful to go close to the stitching, but not through it. After I take out all the pins on this tie, I'll repeat all these same steps on the other side of the apron. At this point, this is what it looks like. Apron tie on the right, this is all open here, apron tie on the left. So we have to now turn these right side out. The way I like to do this is with my fingers, kind of get it started at the end, kind of pull it open and give it a little push with your fingernail, get it started a little bit. And I can take an old paintbrush or a dowel or something like that that's long and, and thin and kind of pull the fabric over the edge of that as I'm kind of pushing it in. It takes a little something to get it started. Just keep doing that as you push it in. You want to make sure that you don't use a brush or an object that's too sharp. Otherwise you could poke a hole in your fabric and that wouldn't be a good idea. Okay, so round on the other side here, I can see my paintbrush coming through. Once, once it starts coming through like this, you can pull the paintbrush out like that and you just, all you have to do is just pull on the fabric and then the tie comes all the way through. But it has to be ironed and that is a little bit of a chore. Sometimes I take a pen and I kind of pull on the seam allowance a little bit to get it to um, come out where I can get it all turned around the right way. Do that on the opposite side too. After your ties are ironed, it should look something like this. Okay, so if I even ironed my waistband so I could find exactly where the nice crisp edge is on the middle. So, and now I'm going to take this little seam allowance that's left over and fold it down over the stitching and kind of cover the stitching and then pin it. I'm going to pin it sideways, okay? And to go along and fold it and pin it in place so it covers all the stitching. Okay, and I'm going to iron this down now. Then and flip this over again. And I'm going to top stitch from the very end of the apron ties down along the bottom, just inside probably an eighth of an inch or something. And as I stitch along the apron band, it will catch the back and the front and it will reinforce it all the way to the, to the other end here. I'm sewing the apron ties. This is on the right side. I'm starting at the end, going backwards, going forward. And this is just some nice looking top stitching, about an eighth of an inch away from the end. When I get up here to where the apron panel is pinned on the back, I can feel my pins under here. I'll pull one out. And I'll just keep top stitching and that will, will sew the back of the apron tie onto the apron panel. Now I'm going to insert my dead. But as I turned it up, I see that I didn't catch it very well underneath here. So I'm going to go across that part one more time. That's why it's good to double check because you know things happen. I think this time I'm going to do something called stitch in the ditch. I'm going to go right along the seam and it will really hide. Yes, stitch in the ditch. The apron is done and then after snipping all the loose threads it looks really wonderful. I'm going to go down to both ends of the apron ties and then I'll sew one button on this tie and one button hole on the other and that'll hold the tie ends together without adding a lot of thickness. I'll be using a button without a shank 
so it should lay really flat too. I really like how clean this looks. I sewed two buttonholes along the waistband above the apron panel. I have two more heart buttons that will match the ones on the front of the dress. So I'll sew them on the front right along the waistline so that I can really anchor the apron where I want it to be. And these buttons will line up with the buttonholes on the apron and add a really pretty decorative touch. Once you have those buttons there, you don't have to worry about the apron shimmying to the right or to the left or slipping down. If you decide you'd rather have normal apron ties rather than the shorter overlapping ones like I made, you need to add at least 20 inches in length to the original apron tie pattern. The fabric usually comes 44 to 45 inches wide and that would be just perfect if you cut one strip 2.5 inches wide of your fabric from salvage edge to salvage edge. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Please join me for part 7 where we'll make a raglan sleeve blouse to match the 6 month baby dimple.